Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. During our TV show, uh, which we do monthly, we are trying to uh, bring information about the different county departments and the services that they provide to the citizens of Sheboygan County. Today we have with us um, Roger Lanning, our Highway Commissioner. We're going to focus on the Highway Department this year. We thought uh, with the uh, winter weather coming, the snow and the ice and the salt and all, all these things and, and the concern that people have about, about uh, this time of year, that we um, would have you come in, Roger, and, and talk a little bit about the uh, work that the Highway Department does uh, during the winter months. But first, why don't you give us a little bit of background about yourself and, and your position of Highway Commissioner? Okay. Thank you, Dan. I started with Sheboygan County in, in 1979 as, as county surveyor and, and highway engineer. And then January 1st of 1987, I was elected to the Highway Commissioner position. Uh, the Highway Com Commissioner position is elected by the county board uh, every four years. It was changed, it used to be two years, and now it was changed to four years and a number of years ago. And what are the responsibilities, not only of yourself, but also of the department? What are, what are the areas that you cover? Okay. Basically, the role of the, of the highway department is, is to maintain the, the county road system, be it pavement maintenance, construction, snow plowing, the marking and signing of the system, uh, uh, litter pickup, everything related to the county road system. Now, I guess I wanted to uh, define that a little bit. Because we do work on all of the roadways in the county, I wanted to just touch on, on, on the county roads. The, the county roads themselves are, are the ones with the letters, and, and then the ones with the names are the, are, are the local roads, the township roads or the village roads. And then, of course, the state and interstate highways have, have the letters. So, so I just wanted to clear up there, the county roads are the ones with the letters, and th those are the ones that we're, by statute, primarily responsible for. So if you live on A or W or else, you're living on a county road. If you live on Vorpal Road, you're living on a, on a, on a town on road. A town road, yes, that's and correct. And then we have the state, the, high, the I-43 system that comes through, and, and state highway, what, 23, 28? And I-43 is an interstate, okay. of course, so, okay. yes. Okay, and how many employees do you have to take care of these roads? Well, we have 120 total employees, uh, and they're divided up during the winter months between six district sheds around the county. For example, there's one in Cascade, and Adel, Plymouth, Howard's Grove, and one along I-43. And uh, during the winter months now that we're getting into, there's about 15 employees that work out of each of those district sheds. That, and each shed maintains, for the snow plowing part of it, about 190 miles. And then, of course, we have a repair shop facility, the vehicle repair on uh, 23rd Street here in Sheboygan, and that's where the administration buildings are. And uh, during the uh, summer months and construction season, then, uh, the employees go out onto the different uh, construction crews, and we have about eight, you know, eight different construction-related crews uh, uh, that, they, that they work. So, we basically have two seasons, construction and, and, and winter, and you know, they always talk about orange barrels. We have the orange barrel season and the snow plowing season, so we change as the seasons change. You mentioned that each of the different sheds is responsible for a section or a number of miles in the county. How many total miles do we have in Sheboygan County? How does that compare with other counties? And, and, and I believe you, you uh, are responsible for the bridge work in the county and, mm -hmm. and maybe uh, just how many bridges we have and, and how often you need to work on those. Sure. Total miles in the county, there, there's 1,500 miles, uh, which includes state, uh, county, village, town, and uh, we, we maintain 77 percent of those, or about 1,150 miles. The, the, uh, the 120 person staff maintains that many of the miles. Uh, and as far as the bridges are concerned, there's 237 bridges in the county that we maintain and, and, uh, and inspect and, and do work for on, on, those, on each structure. And along with the, the roadways and the, and the bridges, what are some of the other um, functions that you provide and services that you provide to the, to the citizens of Shabai County? Okay. Some of the other, as I related uh, before, some of the other construction crews we we have a we have a crushing crew that crushes the gravel, a blacktop crew that that, that 
uh, produces and lays the blacktop. We have a, a grading construction crew that does all of the, the earthwork and the, and the grading on the various roadways. And then the, the other sub crews, be it that we have a, have a concrete crew that does flat work and curb and gutter. And I, we'd mentioned before the bridges, where we do all the bridge repair and, and the bridge inspection. And uh, of course, we have our signing crews and our, our, our center line and, and, and pavement marking crews. So it's kind of the full gamut uh, from, the, from start with the engineering all the way through the construction phase that we, we are involved in each phase of, of, of roadway work. Do you, uh, you, you talk about county roads and uh, the, the local township roads. Do you work for the townships on, on any of their projects or do they uh, get somebody else? To do that? Well, we, uh, <clears throat> there's different arrangements with, with the different townships and municipalities. As I was alluding to where we did 77% of the mileage, that includes uh, the work for the townships on a time of materials basis for snow plowing. And during the summer on construction related work with the black topping or we call it seal coating on the different roads. And then uh, on the state highways, uh, the state of Wisconsin is unique in the, uh, in the nation that the, the counties perform all of the maintenance for the state highway department. Uh, there's some variation of that theme in s different states, but uh, Wisconsin is still unique, whereas uh, we, the counties maintain the state and interstate highways. That's the only equipment the state DOT has is maybe a sign crew, and then they do some of their own marking. So, it, like I mentioned, it's, it's unique that all the counties uh, do the work for the, for the state on a, on a contractual basis. And then with the townships, we do it on a, like I said, time of material or contractual basis for both winter and summer. Now, out of the 15 townships, uh, we maintain uh, about 13 of the townships. But then as, when you as, get- As far as snow plowing? Snow plowing and, 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 and other forms of uh, construction or okay. routine maintenance uh, in, in that regard. In regards to the, the total mileage, which we're alluding to, the uh, um, we have 452 miles of county trunk. Now that ranks of, uh, fifth out of the state as far as the number of county road miles in the, the fifth most in the state. So we, we have a rather large uh, county road system that we, that we maintain with the 120 employees. And of course, I believe we're 36th in size in the state of Wisconsin. And acreage, square miles, acreage and but, square but, miles. But, in, but, it, but we have a lot of roads. We have a lot of roads. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You're a mean one. <laughs> Mr. Grinch, last night I was sitting with my kids on the couch watching that program. It's, it's been a favorite of mine for years, and it made me think, winter's around the corner. Holiday specials are on. We're a little over a month away from, uh, from Christmas, and clearly people... Uh, really rely on your department for keeping our roads clear of the snow and ice removal. Tell us a little bit about how the department handles salting and, and snow removal. Well, as far as uh, like during the uh, the months we're getting into now, um, as far as let, let's let's go with with the well, beyond the regular work shift, the 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 after three thirty uh, part of it. Uh, we work with the sheriff's department on after hours. You know, they're, they're the squads are on the road, and we always have a couple people on call, and we coordinate with the sheriff's department as far as the road conditions and whether or not we should be calling people in for emergency situations. And then during the uh, uh, from December through April, we also tr uh, try and maintain 24-hour service on the on the main roads. The state likes to have as best as we can. 24-hour service on the on the main traveled roads, and primarily to react um, more instantaneously to any emergencies that, that occur, be it the icing up of the bridge decks or just uh, with the temperature variations, how quickly things can can freeze up uh, on the on the roadways. So we have a coordinated effort with with our staff and the sheriff's department staff as far as uh, after hours. But now on the uh, as far as there are regular shifts, now we, we have one shift basically, seven to 3.30. And that's why it becomes difficult in some of the uh, larger storms uh, where they uh, longer duration, uh, trying to juggle enough men and have enough men to, to provide that service that's, that's needed for uh, out on the roadways. 
So specifically, how many snow plows do you have uh, operating at any one time? And, and furthermore, if you have a one to two inch uh, snow depth out there, what's that cost? What's it take to get that moved off the roadways? On a smaller uh, occurrence, the one to three uh, or one to two inch, or where it's basically just a salting operation and you're not plowing, for example, if you're just salting, you're making just one pass and laying salt out and, and make a brine and then the, the traffic basically melts off the small uh, accumulation. And that uh, generally, uh, we, we have 37 units, trucks that, that maintain that 1150 miles and, and go out and do that. And uh, on just a salting occurrence, if it, if it, if it uh, it's a light snow and it quits, when you do it, you go out and do it. It's about, uh, say, six hours, and uh, on an average, it'd be about $15,000 for each one of those occurrences. So as, uh, as time goes on or the, or the wind shifts or you get more accumulation, it becomes multiples of that hour, that six hours and the, and the $15,000. So 37 units, and you mentioned earlier that the, the crew primarily works from 7 to 3.30? Yeah, yes. Now, however, when the snow is blowing and and they need to get out there. They work throughout the night, don't they? Or? We, we try and always work when in, in the peak, the peak traffic times, the, the, the going to work time and the, and the uh, coming home. And uh, you have to remember that you can't keep the guys out there, you know, too many hours, you know, with the rules and regulations. We try and not keep them out there beyond 12 to say 15 hours, okay. but try and rotate guys in, but Sometimes that becomes difficult with, with, with manning uh, each of the plows on a 24-hour basis. So um, in the, uh, say, after 9 o'clock period, from 9 until 4 or 9 until 3 in the morning, we don't have that size of workforce out there, mainly because you don't have the traffic. It's a combination of not having the traffic and not having the, the manpower to have everybody out there to, in the same manner that you do during the heavy traffic hours during the day. So what are, what are some of the more common concerns you hear from your staff regarding snow removal? Um, well, basically, uh, uh, the things I hear from the, from the staff is, is, is the traffic biomes. Like, no one uh, can really realize how difficult it is on I-43 with the amount of traffic, or 23. The main travel roads with the traffic and, and the speeds out there. Uh, it's difficult when... Uh, uh, and it's dangerous out there with, with the truck, you know, with, with the snow blowing up, you know, behind the truck and when you're uh, on, on the two lanes when you're approaching a truck. People don't realize the, uh, the, the visibility problems that are out there and with the conditions that if they would have to slow in a, in a, in, in a hurry, you can't do it. So what concerns the, the guys is, is the volume of traffic and the speed at which uh, people are, are traveling. Now, do you have both a salt and sand mix, or exclusively salt, sand? What what type of uh, components do you put out there? Primarily, now uh, with the with the amount of vehicles on the road and the speeds, we've primarily gone to salt, and we use a liquid calcium chloride uh, as an additive to the salt, or magnesium chloride. We use some of that now, uh, and that helps the salt work at lower temperatures. Uh, and salt will go farther. Or, or last longer than what uh, sand will. Sand is basically meant to be a, a, a attraction type thing and not necessarily a snow melt. So the salt, with the cost of the salt and the, uh, and the, the long lasting of it and, uh, is more economical. So you mentioned earlier that we're, it's about $15,000 to remove a one, two inch uh, snow removal or yes. get, get the uh, salt down. What about annually? What's your budget annually for this? Historically, it's been around a, a to 950 and a, and a and a million dollars normally on an average winter. Of course, with our budgets as as well as the local units of government, there's only so many dollars in the uh, in the annual operating budget. And if you spend more during the winter months, it's less money that's available for the the actual construction and maintenance during the summer months. So, we at the at the highway department maintaining the. Uh, the, the county roads have the same difficulties what the local units of government have as far as budgets are concerned. Now I'm sure depending on the how heavy the snowfall is or 
whether we're dealing with ice or what have you, you get some calls from time to time. If, if someone has a concern or a complaint, who do they call? Well, depending on the area of the county where they're calling in from, we'd, we'd like to have the folks call the one of the area district sheds that I had alluded to previously, uh, because that's where the people are working out of in that area, and they can check up on it probably quicker and get the facts a little quicker. Uh, so if it happens in that area, in a specific area, um, if it happens, if there's a general complaint, you know, the people call in to the, to the main office, our, our administration offices, and in the, in the off hours, uh, the people correspond always with the sheriff's department. So in, in that coordinated effort. And I imagine from time to time, from time to time, you hear from people who, it isn't a county responsibility, it may be a city responsibility, mm -hmm. depending on the jurisdictions. <clears throat> That's right. That's right, and and we do have that occur. Some people don't realize, like if it's on a on a on a on a village or city jurisdiction, or whether it's that's why I'd mentioned it's confusing to, because you see the county trucks on so many of the the, the state, town, local, and county roads. You're right; it does add to some confusion sometimes. So, do you have any recommendations for for people out there on how they can help your crews get that snow removed as quickly and and safely as possible. One of the, uh, the most difficult things we deal with and it, uh, is when we're plowing, for example, when we stop at a stop sign and we have to clean up an intersection, people don't realize that you have to back up and, and, and you know, you can't get the whole intersection in one swipe. You have to back up and, and, and do it a couple different times depending on the size of the intersection. And, and uh, people, we always have a tendency to pull up right behind or tight behind a vehicle and so we have trouble with that sometimes where the guys can't see in their, in their side mirrors that there's a vehicle right, right behind them. So I guess I would ask that people you know, stay back from the back of the snowplow so that the guys can see, see them in the back and be able to perform their duties. And the other thing I mentioned is, is the, uh, the speed. As the snow comes off the plow, you always have that plume of, of blowing snow and uh, and if you get too close to the back of the plow, it's, it's difficult, especially passing a snow plow. Uh, you really have to, have to take your time. So the intersections and following closely behind the plows are, are two of the key concerns. Yes, okay. yes, Very good. absolutely. Before we get away from, from snow, I gotta clear up a couple of things here. When I get up in the morning, I wanna be able to go to work, or at least most people do. Some people think this is great, I can stay home a day or is, especially the kids in school. But <clears throat> you gotta clean the roads for us to go to work. How do these guys that are running these plows get to work? Who's clearing the roads? Nobody's clearing the roads. They're right. clearing the roads. We have, have a very dedicated staff, you know, and, and those guys know if there's gonna be a, a snowfall, they, they do a great job of, of getting to, to work and, and I guess the best way to answer that is that we try and be there before it gets to such a condition that they can't get there. So you've never had a problem where you've got the plows ready to go and the guys are sitting home snowed in? In years past, when we've had the really bad winters and it's been quite a while, uh, we've had an occasion or two where, where you, we, the guy couldn't get there and you had to somehow get to him but that hasn't happened, I don't think, in the last 25 years. So for those that have moved to Sheboygan County in the last few years, they haven't seen anything yet? Because um, we haven't gotten that bad <laughs> snowfall in recent years? I would say the last bad winter, and you will remember it as good as anyone, is probably 1979, 1980. I'm not looking forward to the, any of those <laughs> to again. To any of those? No. <laughs> the other thing I need to clear up is, and I didn't do this when we started, but if somebody, has just joined this show in the last few minutes. The person who was doing the singing <laughs> was the administrative coordinator of Sheboygan County, Adam Payne, and I didn't, I didn't you know, make it clear when we started this show who, who the, the two hosts of the show were. We, we introduced Roger, but uh, uh, I'm the chairman, Dan Lemahieu, and, and Adam Payne, the coordinator. And I just wanted to make that clear so that all these talent scouts that are going out now looking for <laughs> For new people, for the community players in Sheboygan, uh, they'll know who to call for, for this thing. Not me, they should call you. Believe me, okay. it wasn't necessary, Mr. It, Chairman. Well, okay, so I just, just want to make that clear. Thank you. Uh, one of the things, uh, getting, again, getting away from, from uh, snow removal and, 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 and the winter part of the operation, 
one of the things we see in county government is that we're providing services to the community that the state is telling us to do. And, and where the, the, the state decides what services need to be provided and the counties provide the services. And, and, and we, get, we get a little uptight once in a while with, with the mandates and the regulations that the state is putting on counties. And, you know, some of the, most of the services that you provide seem pretty obvious. You know, you're, you're keeping the roadways uh, uh, in good condition for us. You're cleaning the snow off so we can get around in the winter. But does your department, does the highway department get involved in some, this area too where, where, where the, the state is, is mandating and regulating and, and forcing you to do things? Well, sure. We'd fall under the same rules that, 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 that all of your general contractors fall under. Uh, be it, uh, you know, you have laws coming from the federal level, the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, and it funnels down to the uh, the state, and then the state has to implement the laws. So, it, you know, it, it, it goes from federal to state to local. And, you know, yeah, there's been a number of mandates that come down. Uh, one that I know that the uh, nationally they're dealing with is like the, the, uh, the EPA and the stormwater discharge <coughs> runoff program where uh, all construction site and, and construction related work, you have to come up with a, a stormwater management plan and, 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 and uh, create and implement measures to, to limit the runoff and control the runoff. That's an example. Another one would be, for example, the, uh, the, the, the mining reclamation bill, which was passed a few years ago. That is now being implemented, and that's where the, uh, all the, the, uh, the mining operators, which includes the county, as, uh, as we proceed forward in, in the various gravel pits and mining operations that you have to re reclaim the, um, the areas which were mined. And that's, there's nothing wrong with this, so, some of these regulations. So, so our gravel pit is considered a mine? Yes, open pit. And as these regulations come down and these, these mandates and laws, what, obviously there's some costs involved? Well, yes, absolutely. Just for the, the coordination and then the implementation uh, it all takes additional time and monies to, to take care of these things, and yet uh, there's no money associated with it. And it's the same thing in healthcare. We all have to deal with the uh, additional uh, regulations. Lastly, let's talk a little bit about some of the, um, the projects. You, know, you, you talk about your blacktop crew and your gravel crew and, and the different crews you have, the bridge crews. Um, do you identify the projects in advance or do you plan out uh, years in advance? And, and what are some of the projects that, that we'll, you'll be working on the next year or two? I guess let me touch on first uh, some of the st state projects, which, which most of the people are, you know, drive on the main traveled roads. The county does not get directly involved in them, but, but, but of course because they affect the county, we. They have to be involved a little bit on some of the major ones coming up. For example, are State Highway 23, which people have read about in the paper. The uh, uh, the, 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 con the continuation of the four lanes on the north side of Plymouth, going westerly, for uh, up to County Road P. Uh, that's on the books for 2003. The state is uh, is in the design stage right now on that, and that'll ex uh, extend the four lane. Uh, called a bypass of the city of Plymouth. That's coming in 2003. And ultimately, in the next 10 or 12 years, uh, State Highway 23 to Fond du Lac is in the, uh, the long range plan of the state DOT for, once again, continuation of the four lane from Plymouth to Fond du Lac. That's one of the, that's a major program. But coming up right uh, soon is, you know, State Highway 57 uh, from the South County line to Waldo in 2001 and 2002 and even into 2003 that's, that's going to be a project to reconstruct the northbound lanes. If you drive in Ozaukee County you can see they're, re they're reconstructing that now from I-43 up to Random Lane. So that's a the re reconstruction of the northbound lanes is a major pro project of the state coming up in the next couple of years. How, how far north will that go then from the South County line? Up to Waldo. Up to Waldo. Mm -hmm. So that's, those are two big projects. And then a couple of the not complete reconstruct, but upgrading our State Highway 28 uh, from Sheboygan Falls to Waldo. That's coming up uh, next year, 2001. And then ultimately from Waldo to the, through Batavia to the South County line is, is in the long range also for the state. And uh, State Highway 32 
from Cedar Grove to uh, Sheboygan Falls is also scheduled for upgrading, resurfacing in 2002. Some of the, uh, the county roads will be in your area, Dan, in the next, uh, next couple of years. Uh, county you're, Road. You're already making a mess in my area. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a joint project with the village of Oostburg on County Road uh, AA from the village limits to I-43. That's a joint project with the village that will be occurring next year, early next year, hopefully. And then also next year, County Road A from Oostburg to uh, V. That's a distance of three miles. That will also be graded next year. And, uh, and in the future then, 2002 to 2003, we're planned out for about five to six years. It takes that long to, for plan development and acquisition of right away and, and things like that. Uh, but then also County Road V from I-43 to 32. That's a distance of about three miles and also a continuation of A where we leave off at V going northeasterly uh, to Wheaton Creek. That's, those two projects are scheduled for 2002. As some of the projects, and, and I really didn't think about this until you were describing some of the roads that you're gonna be working on, but um, as some of these projects on the outskirts of Sheboygan, like um, on 28, and Taylor Drive, that intersection by I-43, where, where the, the stores are going in there. And, uh, does the county get involved with any of the infrastructure there at all? Or? No, no, those, uh, that's, that's all related to the state DOT where, where the developer has worked with the Department of Transportation for driveway access, if a deacceleration or acceleration lanes at their driveways and whatnot. Because it's primarily involved with the ramps and, and the frontage road, uh, that coordination was primarily handled between the developer and the state DOT. We have a cursory review, be it with access and things like that, and width of driveways, but uh, primarily in that particular case, it's dealt with through the, uh, the, state, uh, the state Department of Transportation. Is there going to be any, even though it's not, a, it's not your project, are you aware of any additional lanes or anything that are going in in that area? Well, at the entrances, for example, on, on the, on the frontage road, the west frontage road, there, there will be what we call deacceleration lanes for traffic okay. can get off of the main traveled uh, portion of the road in order to enter and also come on to the main Seems roadway. Seems like there's gonna, that's going to be a highly traveled intersection and there's going to be a lot, of, yeah. a lot of traffic through there. Yeah, there will, it, it'll definitely take coordination with, this, with the signals that are at the ramps and uh, it's kind of a uh, work in progress. Well, thank you, Roger. I, I've, I've learned some things, and, and I thought I knew, knew all this when we were coming in, so I learned some things today, so I, I really appreciate you coming in, and, and uh, I wish you well in the next few months during the winter season that, that you don't get a lot of calls and complaints, that uh, the snow is all handled uh, properly and, and, uh, and everything goes well, and, and including the safety of the, of the crews, and that's always a concern is, is the, they're out there in, in the wind and the snow, and, and, and safety is a concern. So. So uh, I, I look forward to winter. I, I like to get out in the snow, but uh, sometimes it's not always so much fun on the roads. <laughs> uh, so we thank you for the work you do. You. Next month, uh, what we'd like to do is, uh, again, uh, this theme of the winter months coming and the cold weather. Um, Adam and I have talked about having somebody from Health and Human Services Department with us and uh, talking about the services that are available to uh, all this, the residents of Sheboygan County and, 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 and including the elderly and, and those that are shut in and the services that are available during the winter months. So we, we hope to continue this theme of the winter months uh, in December and some of the services that are available. So uh, again, to those that are, are viewing our show, we're, uh, we're happy you're watching, we're happy you're getting informed, and we welcome you back next month uh, when we talk again about Sheboygan government working for you. Thank you.